Amanda X. Let's begin by navigating to the model wizard. For the space dimension, let's click on 3D. Let's navigate down to heat transfer. Let's expand conjugate heat transfer and let's select laminar flow. Add. Let's add a study under general studies. Click on stationary. Click it on. Let's begin by importing our geometry. So let's right click on geometry and we'll use the insert sequence method. Let's select our geometric sequence. So you navigate to where you have that stored and you select that. Open. Once that is inserted, you need to click build all. So if you need to see the heat sink, you just need to select the wire frame rendering or you can use the transparency method as well. But I'll leave it as wire frame. Now let's close our geometry and let's select laminar flow right here and let's go to the domains and let's choose air so domain selection and air and let's go to heat transfer in solids let's click on fluid and let's select air okay now let's add material so home toolbar click on add material let's expand it in we're going to add air so add the components we're going to add aluminium 3003-h 1 8 so add that and we're going to also add silica glass so add that as well and then you can click on add material to close it for silica glass geometric entity domain selection we're going to change that from manual and we're going to select the geometry silica glass which is here so we add a silica glass to that for the material and for the aluminium we're going to add aluminium to our heat sink as well so selection aluminium and for the air the outer rectangular shape that would be our air so let's choose there right here so our, all our material has been applied to our relevant geometry now we need to add some expressions so we have global definitions so we're going to add two more parameters here so all you need to do is pause the video here and you enter these two parameters so we have uppercase u0 and lowercase p0 along with the expressions and the description okay so now let's add uh, ambient properties so let's go to physics and where we have shared properties let's select ambient properties and as you can see here the default temperature value is 293.15 kelvins also note that it is possible to edit the ambient temperature value or to define it using the, the meteorological data which gives access to climate data from more than 8600 stations in the world all right so let's focus on our physics for a bit note that the 
initial condition is the default boundary condition for the fluid so let's define the inlet and outlet conditions for such we we'll start by navigating to our physics laminar flow in the model builder let's make this a bit smaller let's zoom to extends here that's good enough so laminar flow with that selected let's right click and let's add a inlet and for the boundary selection let's select inlet that looks okay boundary conditions where we have velocity let's change that to fully developed and let's keep in our recently added parameter that will be of a PCU zero that was the name that we gave to it let's right click on laminar flow once again let's do the outlet and for the boundary selections that will be outlet and we need to now do similar for the heat transfer in solids and fluids physics so thermal insulation is the default boundary conditions for the temperature so let's define the inlet and outlet conditions for that we have heat transfer in solids let's right click on that let's go to flow conditions inflow and for the inflow let's choose inlet right here and this looks okay for the inlet but let's change this to ambient temperature which we created recently and let's right click on the chance for in solids and fluids again flow conditions outflow among the selection would be outlet okay and let's now add a heat source so let's right click on heat transfer in solids and fluids and let's add a heat source and for the heat source that would be applied to the silica glass and for the heat source let's change it from general source to heat rate and let's enter our newly created parameter which will be uppercase p0 that looks okay now let's go to our mesh so let's scroll down let's click on mesh physics control mesh let's leave it as that element size let's try a coarser and let's build all okay so let's see how our geometry looks so let's click on click on a hide right here make sure selected boundaries is selected and let's hide this portion this portion and that portion that looks okay let's run our computation to see what happens so go to bar and let's hit complete when our computation is completed we'll come back and analyze our results if there are errors we'll try and solve those errors okay our computation is completed let's zoom extends let's focus on our results before we continue just want to mention to achieve more accurate numerical results the mesh can be refined by choosing another predefined element size however we use the coarser element size in order to lessen the computational time and memory so let's 
focus on temperature let's expand that or temperature results and let's right click on volume and let's choose transparency let's scroll down a little bit more and where we have temperature and fluid flow let's expand that let's also expand fluid flow let's click on fluid flow for the number of points for the x let's try 40 and for the y let's try 20. let's change the entry method for the z three points to coordinates and let's key in five millimeters now let's go back to our model builder let's click on filter and for the filter let's check the element selection logical expression for inclusion okay let's make some adjustments to that so let's key in that and let's hit plot okay cannot evaluate value expression we have a variable problem there reason being we need a lowercase s right here okay and let's hit plot here again all right that looks great let's zoom to extent let's add a predefined plot so let's go back home where we have windows let's expand that let's select add predefined plot here under study one solutions one let's expand heat transfer in solids and fluids so let's select energy balance and let's add to plot now let's close this and let's click on evaluate so here we should have the energy balance table so you can verify that the energy balance value is close to zero indicating a good energy balance furthermore as expected in a stationary model the total accumulated energy rate is equal to zero the total net energy rate is close to one watt which balances the total heat source finally the total work source is close to zero because there are no external forces performing work and the work done by viscous stresses is negligible as you can see here the surface plot shows a temperature field on the channel walls and the heat sink surface while the arrow plot shows the flow velocity field around the heat sink in part two of this tutorial we'll conduct a surface to surface radiation simulation